Hi, my name is P3, working at Hyundai Motor Company. In this talk, I'm going to introduce Guider, a new performance monitoring demo, and explain how to use it. This is a summary for my talk. First, talking about performance analysis and optimization. Next, introducing Guider and its various features. And finally, explaining how to monitor performance of our system automatically using it. Okay, let's talk about performance factors. First of all, the major performance factor is CPU. There are many reasons make your system slow, such like CPU intensive job, frequent context switching, busy way task, and so on. If your system is slowing down, the first thing to do is watching total CPU usage and which tasks are using CPU cores. Memory is also important. Frequent memory allocation and deallocation jobs will consume CPU more than expected. An inefficient allocation and missing deallocation, such like leads, can cause the, uh, the out of memory. Then system will be slow seriously. In worst case, it will restart finally. To free up memory, Linux kernel try to flush file caches, swap pages out. It called reclaim. Once reclaim start, the system will slowly start to slow down. Next one is I/O. Generally, uh, block device is the slowest in our system. So optimization such like caching, preloading, compression, working tuning, workload tuning is required. Especially on unnecessary I/O operations should be uh, removed, and contiguous operations must be merged. Last one is for communication. Lock. Lock. Uh, it's very important to prevent data corruption shared between uh, multiple tasks, but it can have a, a huge impact on performance. Excessive lock contention increases CPU usage and also response time. Moreover, performance can be worse depending on lock cont attributes such like priority inheritance protocol, uh, busy way, wake up storm in few texts. IPC, uh, in the modern system, modern system all services, all services uh, generate remote procedure call using system bus, such like DBus, to operate in a uh, complex relationship with each other. But this RPC may cause system overhead, such like context switching, uh, serialization, memory copy. In particular, uh, broadcasting calls greatly increases the system load and response time. IPC uh, is uh, it's very heavy uh, communication. And next one is IRQ, especially uh, software interrupts called bottom half can affect system response time. Network drivers are uh, typical. So it has many performance tuning options between CPU usage and response time. Uh, it's about uh, trade-off. In addition to uh, these factors I described, there are many other performance factors. Most importantly, uh, we need to be able to recognize such performance factor and uh, measure its actual impact. Yes, we need to think about how to measure them. Uh, logging and using tools are uh, the most effective way to analyze performance. Logging is very useful for uh, recording specific information, but understanding log requires domain-specific knowledge to 
system level engineers or uh, new members are difficult to understand them usually. In addition, adding new logs requires source code and uh, toolchain for rebuild. It's very boring and time consuming. So it's also difficult to uh, record and analyze too many logs because of the uh, limitation for memory and our time. So we prefer to use performance tools. It's very comfortable and effective to analyze performance at system level. Some nice tools doesn't even uh, require rebuilding target program, uh, installing itself with dependent packages, uh, restarting target task. But sometimes too many tools confuse us, determining the right tool from a variety of performance issues that easy. So I introduced Guider, Unified Runtime Performance Analyzer. It can monitor, profile, trace, uh, visualize various performance factors. Monitoring features provide continuous performance stats every interval in real time. Profiling features provide a, a statistic overview of collected data during a specific interval. Tracing features provide specific data on the execution of the test in the form of logs. Guider is a kind of uh, client uh, command line uh, interface tool. So it offers, it offers a lot of features by the combination of commands and options. But in this talk, I will try to explain uh, only some useful features and tracing features about uh, about it because of time limitation. Uh, it's open source program and written in Python. So it doesn't require installation, but PIP and uh, open embedded up to OSP uh, is uh, supported for your convenience. Actually, uh, just executing guido.py file is you know, enough. Uh, Guido never use external binaries such like executable programs or libraries, libraries, uh, Python packages, except for Matplot library for some kind of visualization features. Uh, most of Guido features are implemented directly using a standard library such like libc. Uh, that's the reason why Guido doesn't uh, require rebuild, uh, install, and configuration. In addition, it can be applied with only one megabyte of storage space. These characteristics are very attractive in uh, embedded systems. All features of Guider are supported in Linux and Android. And it also provides some limited features on Mac OS and Windows. From now, let me introduce some killing features of Guider. First one is monitoring system resources in real time. This feature works by periodically updating states for uh, system resource and events. Uh, system resource is about CPU, memory, swap, block, network, uh, storage. As shown in the picture, in the first part, system resource information is shown on the top line such as the uh, number of core, RAM, swap. And uh, additional system information such as context switching, interrupt, running task, memory zone, and performance stats using PMU are also displayed. In the second part, important system level resources and events are printed. System stats such as CPU uses available memory, swap usage, memory reclaim, block IO, network IO, uh, most precious information for performance analysis. 
In addition, purple usages are also printed. Although not shown in the picture, governor, clock, temperature for each core can be shown together using specific options of guider. In the third part, storage information about busy workload or backlog space is shown for uh, each device. Heavy storage workload can uh, cause serious performance degradation. That's the reason why we check those stats. In the upper part of the picture, network information about inbound and outbound is shown for each device. In the lower part of the picture, not only system resources, but also task resources are shown with their attributes in real time. It's a little bit uh, similar to uh, Linux top command. Uses it for CPU, uh, virtual, physical, shared memory, swap, and block IO, and memory details are printed well. The shown tasks are sorted by CPU uses in uh, default, but you can change the sort uh, order using a specific option. The task filter is also available to show only specific tasks. All or specific uh, function calls are monitored for specific task in real time. In addition, stats of uh, function calls are also printed such uh, as average, minimum, uh, maximum time. For this picture, all function calls are shown with backtrace. Uh, that uses is not about CPU, uh, it's the proportion for the total function course. So this feature is useful when finding uh, frequent calls or uh, measuring specific function calls count, function call count, uh, including backtrace. Of course, there is another function monitoring feature to measure CPU intensive function calls by sampling techniques. The task filter and function filter are also supported. All these calls, including backtrace, are also moni monitored for a specific task in real time. In addition, these call states are also shown such as uh, elapsed time, error return together. This feature is very useful when uh, finding these calls that take uh, a long time measuring specific syscall count, uh, checking syscall error returns. The task filter and syscall filter are also supported. All opened files, uh, sockets, pipes are monitored for each process in real time. Files are printed with position and open flag. TCP and UDP uh, sockets are printed with binding and connection status. Unix domain sockets are also printed with the uh, uh, file pass. And this kind of information is very precious when debugging uh, issues or performance tracing. The process filter and the uh, file filter are also available. By using the file filter, monitoring all processes that open the specific files or bind the specific socket is uh, as possible. The first tracing feature is for uh, native function such like such functions such as uh, C, uh, C++, Rust, Go. Uh, native function tracing is started by a uh, btrace command. The command is implemented using backtrace and uh, breakpoint, yeah, called trap. Breakpoints for all uh, symbol addresses from ELF and dwarf sections are injected to the target task's virtual memory by guider itself. So guider can detect events for function call and uh, function return from the target task by ptrace. Guider can even read and manipulate registers and uh, memory for the target task when function events occurs. As shown in the picture, 
call stacks are shown in various steps for Go program in real time. Arguments and uh, binary name for each function are also printed together in our line. The G option in the command line is task filter. That means all tasks have name including Go will be our targets for function trace. The H option means printing backtraces. So if there was no H option in the command line, just all function calls only are printed without depth. Next tracing feature is about Python function. Python function tracing is started by ptrace command, a py trace command. Uh, the command will print it, uh, will print all Python method calls. As shown in the picture, uh, Python call stacks are printed in real time at various depths depending on the stack frame, file pass, and line number for uh, for the each function are also printed together. The target was IOTA program that written in Python and prints IO uses in real time. Call commands used in previous native function tracing are also available for this feature. Next tracing feature is for syscall. Syscall tracing is started by strace command, uh, similar to Linux uh, original command. The command will print all syscalls and their arguments converted into an uh, easy to understand format. As shown in the picture, syscalls are printed with backtrace, uh, return value, and lapsed time in real time. Call commands used in previous native function tracing are also available for uh, this feature. Next tracing feature is for signal. Signal tracing is started by a uh, sig trace command. The command will print all received signals for the target task. In addition, uh, the cause of the signal generation and the sender can be also printed when receiving a uh, segmentation fault, child signals, sig child. As shown in the picture, uh, received signals are printed for the target threads in real time. And those threads were ter uh, terminated because of uh, segmentation fault caused by a long memory access. Uh, Text-based analysis is specific, but uh, less readable. That's why Guider provides visualization features in SVG format. Using the SVG format output in your web browser, it provides an easy to view and responsive interface. Uh, first, visualization, uh, first visualization feature is about resource graph. As shown in the picture, the top box shows graphs of CPU usage for processes. Uh, the box on the right side is the label list of the CPU graphs. Uh, the middle box shows graphs of uh, block and network I.O. for the full system. The bottom box shows graphs of memory for the whole system. Uh, uh, of course, process graphs about uh, block, network, and memory resources are also available. In addition, filter option for all of them is also supported. Uh, as, show, uh, as you can see, this visualization feature makes it easy to understand big data collected for a long time. And it also helps to understand the trends in resource uses. And this is also good for communication with other people. Next, next visualization feature is about uh, scheduling. The scheduling data is very large and uh, very difficult to analyze one by one. Therefore, as shown in the picture, uh, scheduling data such as time slice, preemption, and blocking should be visualized prior to uh, detailed analysis. 
using the SVG format output in your uh, web browser, you can view details for time slices, all time slices. It's, uh, it's very effective uh, for analyzing uh, multi-threaded programs, uh, interactive services, detailed tasks for utilization. In addition, this feature also allows uh, for scheduling events as well as other custom events having uh, timestamps for start and end. Last visualization feature is about uh, course text. Analyzing only last called functions without whole course text is difficult because uh, standard functions such like read, write, can be called by any other functions. Above all, in uh, most cases, last called functions will not uh, cause all the problems. The, pro uh, the problem is likely some other functions that called those last functions. Therefore, to analyze performance problems in a function level, we need to uh, need we need to able to uh, see the whole, including each call step. In this case, uh, this plain graph feature is very useful to analyze call step based profiling results for CPU usage and blocking status, memory leak, Cisco trigger, uh, function calls. Uh, as shown in the picture, last functions. Uh, the bottom of each stack are various, so we need to analyze upper functions that contains them. I guess uh, modifying those functions will improve your application or uh, service performance actually. Opening the SVG format output in your web browser, highlighting, zooming, searching specific functions, or stacks are also available using mouse and keyboard. However, uh, how to analyze a problem that is not well reproduced? Sudden stuttering, uh, screen freezing, uh, system reset, audio chopping, uh, slow at launch, or uh, switching. These kinds of problems are difficult to analyze using uh, simple logs and uh, often require system level information. Even if it is a temporary problem that occurs suddenly and uh, disappears, there is no time to try to analyze something by connecting a terminal. Sometimes there are uh, potential problems that are not even visible to uh, the naked eye. How can you analyze those problems easily, quickly, and accurately with minimal effort? For this purpose, Guido runs as a system, system daemon for at all times and monitors uh, system status and activities. And based on a threshold for a, a predefined resource or uh, event, specific commands are automatically executed to uh, handle them. The specific operation is shown in the figure. Guider daemon loads the config file during initialization and registers resource thresholds for each defined event and comments to handle them. After that, the target resource uses is periodically saved and checked. And if this resource uses meets uh, the conditions of, the, of a specific event, the, the event is generated. When an event occurs, the guider sequentially executes the commands registered in the event. In addition, a separate, uh, a separate report file is created and stored in, the, uh, in our storage by summarizing the uh, stored system information, including resource usage. This allows you to 
uh, automatically handle problems with predefined commands when a specific problem occurs or start problem analysis with a, a generated report. These functions, uh, which work uh, works all the time, are usually performed using a small account of resources of about 1 to 5 uh, percent uh, per second based on one only one core, one CPU core. Yeah, it's very right. In the demo, the occurrence condition of each event is defined as the threshold value of each resource defined in advance uh, through the config file. Each event is largely classified into system, task, and device units. System type attributes are defined for uh, system-wide resources. Task type attributes are defined as well as all or specific tasks. Uh, device type attributes are defined uh, for specific storages or network devices. In the case of resources, as well as hardware devices such as CPU, GPU, RAM, storage, and network, logical resources such as uh, block, system load, file descriptors, uh, sockets and in storage files are also included. Additionally, uh, various types of logs, uh, functions, and IPC messages are also uh, uh, able to be uh, monitored. Okay, the uh, command to be executed when an event occurs uh, through the config file can also be uh, defined. If you look at the config in JSON format on the right side of the screen, uh, events of system and task are defined for CPU resources. The attributes of each event include a, a threshold value such as total and a list of commands to be uh, executed. Through the system part defined at the top, if the, if the average uh, system CPU uses exceeds uh, nine, 95%, the save command is executed and Guider creates a report file based on the, uh, the information uh, it has stored in the buffer. Uh, through the task part defined at the bottom, when the average CPU uses of specific task exceeds uh, 95%, uh, the CMD Tita proc command is executed and the guider starts concrete monitoring for uh, all threads of the target process and saves it to a file. In this way, when each event occurs, the commands defined in the command list are executed sequentially and in parallel. These commands may be uh, predefined in the config file. It can also be a user-defined command that the user can uh, execute immediately in the shell. The left side of the screen shows the commands provided by default. Top command uh, system-wide monitoring. The F top command uh, monitors open files. The M top com uh, M top command uh, provides specific memory uh, monitoring of system and specific tasks. The disk top command provides specific I/O monitoring of system and tasks. And net top command provides specific uh, network monitoring of the system. The func func rec command uh, monitors functions uh, for all tests, all threads in our system. The tita proc commands uh, uh, monitors all threads of the target process, and tita utap command monitors uh, function that performs a specific target threads. Finally, uh, the leak command 
performs function tracing to find the memory leak point for a specific process. In addition, uh, various functions provided by Guider can be easily combined and used uh, as event handling commands. All of this is done by Guider itself without installing any uh, separate packages or uh, relying on any particular system. As shown at the uh, bottom of the screen, when an event occurs, the names of the report files that are automatically generated have a, a regular format. All the files start with the uh, execution order and number of reports, and the resource occurrence range, threshold value, and time information of the events that generated the report file, the report are uh, added to the file. In default, uh, each, each report is uh, just a text file, but it can be compressed and uh, generated according to the guide execution options. The reason that the uh, compression function is supported is because uh, report files are automatically created in the background, so storage can be uh, accessibly uh, used when many files are created. In addition, uh, if you use the option of the maximum size of the directory uh, where report files are created, the daemon try, tries to maintain the specified capacity by uh, erasing all this one if a new report file is created that exceeds the spec specified size. This is very important for math products in embedded world. From now on, we will explain the report file that is automatically generated when an event occurs. At the top of the report file, information like the picture is displayed. Execution uh, options, versions, runtime, load, number of tasks, kernel command line, this information helps to understand each system and execution options through report files generated in various environments. The following is information about system resources. Information about when storage network is displayed, including other resources. It displays the system resources at the time the report was generated, as well as the resources at the time the daemon was first launched. Using this, you can see uh, the approximate resource changes and uh, easily determine the resource available at the time of event creation. If the previous page showed uh, the snapshot at the time of the event uh, as each resource table, from now on, based on the, uh, the information stored in the, the buffer before the event occurs, it shows uh, the amount of resource change in each section for a long time. For example, the top summary table shows the system resource usage line by line for each segment. Displays various resources such as CPU, memory, block, swap, reclaim, fault, context switching, interrupt, number of tasks, network. Can you see the resource change? Network is uh, the top CPU info table. From here, uh, from here on, the CPU uses of threads is displayed in units of intervals according to each process and option, not the system. It also displays the maximum, average, minimum, and total stacks for each process's CPU uses. 
This is very useful for uh, detecting steady CPU usage or sudden bursts of CPU usage uh, for a specific task. The resource table of these process units is not only CPU, but also VSS, RSS, delay, IO, C group, and other things. When analyzing a report, it can be useful from several uh, perspectives. Finally, the part that shows the most specific information. It shows detailed events and resource information that occurred in each section. Based on the previously summarized information, it is information that can be uh, referenced when you need specific information on a specific section. In particular, the information of the process is specified and it is possible to check how much each resource is used in which area. Finally, the part sh uh, that shows the most specific information This is about a graph uh, based on previous uh, text report. We can uh, check the trends of resources in the picture and uh, long uh, data, big data based on long term profiling. Okay, there are cases when it is necessary to control the demon under spe uh, special circumstance. At this time, since the demon operates in the background, uh, commands cannot be sent to the uh, standard input. So the guider provides an event command separately to control uh, the background demon. This command is originally used to uh, generate a specific event if a, uh, a string if a string starting with CMD is used, it's interpreted as a command to be passed to the demo. The command to be delivered to the demo is as shown in the figure. There are uh, buffer size changes, uh, buffer initialization, monitoring stop activation and deactivation of monitoring for specific, specific resource, change of monitoring cycle, config reload, first report generation, demo restart, yeah. So far, I have explained some kind of useful features, including tracing of guider, there are more uh, useful features uh, besides the ones I described, but I couldn't explain all them because of uh, time limitation. For specific details, please prefer to the readme file in your guide or report. And if you have any questions, please contact me using email or on GitHub. Thank you for your listening. Thank you.